taking the time to chat with us. This is this is really cool. Well, something we do take pretty seriously is that we're able to help so many people kind of start this journey to become an online English teacher. So it's amazing that then our students kind of have the opportunity to ask you their questions because you're a person who has gone through the motions and has successfully done it. Um, so thank you, first of all. <laughs> Thanks for having me. I guess I got into teaching English online because I wanted to travel and I moved to Peru and it, I started teaching English for a language institute in Peru where I'd go to students offices like lawyers and engineers and business people and I'd teach them one-on-one -on -one. and that was I guess that was it, it had its perks firstly I could fall back into you know using Spanish in the classroom to to help them understand but after a while, you know, the, the traffic and the commuting, it was just awful in the in capital city in Lima. So I found the company that I work for now, which is iTutor Group, and I've been teaching online with them for four years and eight months now. Wow, congrats. So it's been perfect, yeah. I guess besides no traffic, which is quite nice, what are the benefits of teaching at home and online versus, you know, in a school or going to a traditional classroom setting? And one of the other major things for me is um, just kind of being autonomous, you know? I like having my space, being in control of all of my own equipment, kind of being my own boss mm -hmm. to some extent. And, you know, that's that's really good. You don't have anyone sort of breathing down your neck and telling you where to go and what to do next. It's all you're, you're in control of your your own schedule and, and everything. I like that. That's awesome to hear. Um, and then if you don't mind, uh, for a bit of backstory here, once our students complete our courses, they're sent a survey to kind of give us their feedback, their thoughts, their opinions. You know, what did they like? What could we do better? Um, and we find that a lot of times, especially with the TESOL course, they will then submit their questions about what's next, right? I have this certificate. Can you help me, you know, with X, Y, and Z? So we've compiled a few of their questions, if you don't mind answering them. Um, I mean, I Absolutely. think somebody would know these things better than you. Um, sure. The first one, which makes sense, is, you know, so, okay, you're done. You've got your TEFL certificate. What do you do? Like, what's next? What do you do? Where do you start once you have that piece of paper in hand? Absolutely. Well... You gotta, you gotta research. You gotta look at companies. You gotta look around, see what people are saying about different companies. There are, you know, so many online companies that you could apply at and teach at. There are probably maybe seven major ones okay. uh, that everyone talks about. But you, you have to really take the time. And I'd say that the the market right now is a little bit competitive considering you know everything that's going on in the world people want to work online so you know making sure that when you do apply eventually you take your time you personalize your cv and your introduction video for the company that you're um, applying at you are there any tips that you have for somebody to really nail an online job interview especially because some people have never interviewed online before they're just used to in-person interviews Absolutely. So in, I remember my interview, you know, which was a long time ago. I remember the interviewer told me that I was frowning too much. She was asking me questions and I was kind of concentrating, thinking, and I was doing this. And she said, you need to smile, you know, when you look at the camera. And that's one of the hardest things is, uh, you know, just smiling and looking into the camera and being kind of personable. Mm -hmm. And also, if you have some props that you might be asked to do a mock session in the interview so if you have some props and you can kind of you know let yourself go a little bit and show some colorful things and have a bit of fun with it yeah it will really stand out that's great advice thank you i think people will really appreciate that um and then some a question that we also get sometimes from people because we have a pretty international classroom if you will are there online english teaching jobs for people who aren't native english speakers yeah, there are. Um, obviously, there are less opportunities for people who are non-native English speakers. Um, but I think off the top of my head, there is a company called Palfish. I think Palfish accepts non-native English speakers. But um, I'm going to recommend anyone who's looking 
for comparisons of companies and rec different requirements. Uh, Nikki Lubin, who I mentioned before, she has a good blog on all this kind of stuff. Um, I'd recommend one of my own videos or something, but I haven't actually gone into that in, in depth. And she has a YouTube channel as well, so she, she actually talks about that there. Oh, perfect. And what are some of the best outlets to find students? Like if, you know what I mean, you're ready to start teaching online, how do you find people to teach? Hmm. So if you're going to work for a company such as uh, Cambly, where their setup is more like you have to advertise yourself and sell yourself, they these kinds of companies, they pull the students for you. But yeah. if you're going to go into private teaching and you want to find your own students, I mean, I've never really done that, so I don't know too okay. much about it. But I imagine if you can get a, a presence on Instagram or on YouTube, you could probably find uh, a lot of people. On Instagram, you know, these English uh, teachers tend to offer, you know, just little videos or little pictures, teaching words or phrases from time to time. And if you do that consistently, you can um, build up a following pretty quickly, I think. Ah, cool. Okay, so kind of start with providing people value so that then they know that you're a teacher that they want to work with or to follow and vice versa. And I, I know you just showed me a few, which was great, but do you have any favorite like teaching props that you use? Yeah, so I mean, for me, honestly, I love using, you know, right now I'm not actually sat in a coffee shop without a mask on. <laughs> uh, this is a green screen, I'm sat at home. So um, I love to use uh, different, um, kind of effects. I remember the last class I did was about rugby. So I oh, used God. yeah, this stuff. Or if I'm teaching mm, something and I don't know, we, we're talking about a dish and I'll just show it behind me. So I love doing this sort of stuff in the class. How fun is that? It's great. I mean, this is OBS Studio that I use. It's free and it does take a bit, bit of time to learn. And, and the thing is about OBS is it has the free chroma key green screen function. So I, I'm just using a green screen behind me. Mm -hmm. And I even have it like one cover in my chair because <laughs> it's like this big gaming chair. So <laughs> it's a little bit garish. Um, and in terms of like, if I'm not using a green screen, I'll just untick my chroma key thing. Yeah, I mean, I have a, a load of uh, flashcards that I like to use uh, with kids if I'm not going to use my green screen okay. or I have, I have about three boxes of props and this is just one of them. Wow. Um, and yeah, actually my, my wife Mimi made all of these herself <laughs> by hand. And if you can find things from around the house, just start saving them, right? If you have a class about, I don't know, um, food and you have some plastic fruit or you want to go out and buy some plastic fruit um th those are things that you're going to use for years and years and years you know so if you have any kind of little teddy or character that you can have in the classroom it really makes students feel relaxed especially kids sometimes what i do with a prop it's one of my best pieces of advice with props is if you have a class with a little kid you want to kind of go off camera and uh, start your class just you know this is the teacher for now Hello, my name's Oxford. And they open up, they're ready to talk to you, and then you can, you know, slowly roll in and, and show your uh, your unattractive or attractive face. <laughs> That's so sweet. I wish I would have started this interview like that now. I'm sorry I didn't have Teddy <laughs> to wait in front of the camera. Yeah. That's awesome. It's fun. And now with all of these lessons and invoices and students, what are some of the ways that you keep yourself organized with so much going on? I am actually super organized, but I'm I'm really lax about it as well. So I don't, um, like I said before, I, I don't spend a lot of time planning. Um, I have a spreadsheet where I keep all of my, um, all of my incomes marked and labeled. And every time something new comes in, I'll input that in and I have all of them sectioned out, you know. So affiliate um, income is here. Um, like income from IOA is here and I mark that down and I track it down. Even though all the, all the, basically all the, all the places that I make money from anyway, the, the money is tracked. 
but it's always a good idea to track it yourself Definitely. and have yeah have your own spreadsheet just in case you know the website goes down or there's um, a discrepancy you want to get into yeah um, and yeah, with students I can't offer too much advice right now I teach one private student so that's really easy for me um, the company Not that I work for it track of. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and you know when you work for a company, it's all there on the platform for you. I wouldn't, I wouldn't waste time making spreadsheets with all the students I teach because it's just you're going to spend more time doing that than you, than you are teaching. So yeah, and which is exactly why you wanted to start teaching online in the first place, right? To avoid that kind exactly. of administrative work that makes complete. Yeah. Um, and speaking of you know invoices and income, is you know people are you know they've got their Tesla certificate and now they're wondering is this really a full-time job? I think a lot of people don't really know. There's so many question marks. Can you be a full-time online English teacher and that can be your sole income? So I would have said definitely a year ago. I would have said it's definitely doable. Um, right now, like I said before, it is a bit more competitive and it is a bit more saturated. But, you know, I think it is still possible the only thing is you might have to consider um, working for t two companies at the same time okay. to try and get all of your hours booked. How many hours a week do you teach? I teach about 43 hours per week, including everything. Um, so, I, you know, I'm really off. lucky. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm, I'm lucky because, you know, I've been at the company for a while and I've managed to keep a high rating. So I get... Um, I get a, I get good bookings and it's it's been consistent for me pretty much ever since I started. But you know, there's some new people who who are joining companies now they're finding it a bit difficult to kind of um, you know make their mark and and you know, stay on 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 both their feet. But it is definitely doable if you're if you're a good teacher. You know, if you really if you are a passionate teacher, the company will um, see that and they'll likely give you more classes or the students will see that and they'll likely book you more so i think now is the time where the good teachers more than ever you know come to the front of the line and the teachers who are maybe not as passionate or not as serious about it then they're gonna really feel the um the consequences of that you know yeah for sure and you know, being one of these teachers and having this kind of life change and becoming a full-time online English teacher, how has that impacted your life? Wow, it has completely changed my life, to be honest. Um, I would never have imagined that I'd be able to work from home and, you know, have my own space. And um, I, I don't know, it, 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 it's amazing. It's just completely life-changing and I wouldn't look back I, would, I wouldn't change it i'd continue doing this for as long as yeah as long as i can for sure that's amazing to hear um and yeah. do you have any advice for other teachers that want to become more like you you know what i mean who want to have this life-changing experience do you have any advice for them when they're looking to get started yeah um absolutely i think when you decide to be a teacher what you really have to do is you have to find your passion and you have to find your interest and you have to really be invested in the idea of teaching and you have to give it 110 percent every time um there are lots of videos that you can find where people give you advice and it's good to listen to people's advice but be selective about you know what advice you uh, take and what advice you follow um, and just try and you know really do your best and you'll stand out. I think when it comes to being a, being a great teacher, in, in my mind, it's about building a rapport with students. So making a connection and really, um, you know, showing your personality off a little bit in the class and having a bit of fun with it. Also, correcting students rigorously. They love that. And I think students are probably not going to want to have a class with you again if you just talk to them because they want you to jump in and correct them um and, and i think the last thing is just be responsive be patient be be diligent and hard working so if a company you know reaches out to you or sends you an email you might think oh yeah, I'll, I'll you know respond tomorrow or in a few days no just read the email understand it uh, read it a few times so you make sure you, you're gonna um 
answer it properly, give them a good answer and, and be there first, you know, if you, if you yeah, I, I know loads of teachers who work for even the company that I work for, they, you know, they get, get an email and maybe they get a couple of emails a week and they just get, you know, bored of reading them. So they give up. Um, and then, you know, a, a couple of weeks later, they're like, why, why is everyone teaching these new kinds of classes? Why aren't I involved? I'm not getting booked. So, well, you know, they did email you about it. So you, you could miss opportunities if you don't read correspondence and, and respond accordingly. I think that's brilliant advice, even for multiple sectors, not even just online yeah. English teaching. I think like communication is so key to really taking advantage of those opportunities. Absolutely. Even with um, affiliate things, you know, yeah. uh, with International Open Academy, whenever they reach out to me, I'm there, I'm attentive, I'm ready. And I imagine, I mean, I, I, I don't know, but I imagine uh, you guys might reach out to a lot of people who give you a, you know, n n either no response or just a half-hearted, uh, whatever kind yeah. of response. And that's not what you're looking for, right? You want someone who's going to be there. Yeah. And in that sense, we so appreciate you. So thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Um, and there's one more question that I don't think I actually sent to you. So this is kind of a surprise and you don't have to have an answer. Okay. But is there anything that your subscribers are always asking you questions about or the people that follow you on your channels? What's what's the most common question you get as a person who's kind of immersed in the English teaching world? Uh, so the thing that my subscribers ask for the most is probably more recordings of me teaching in the class. Okay. Now, I think it's a good good thing to point out is um, you have to be really careful and I actually had to go back because I had a lot of recordings of me teaching classes and I had to go back and re-edit a lot of those videos and actually remove a lot of them because I'd left the students names in there or you know and, and company I you know I reread my contract and it said you know you're not really supposed to share client data and I thought that's pretty much client data, their name. So I, I went back and got rid of it all and now I do much less of that. But if you can find a way to show someone yourself teaching, then you're gonna have, you know, people are gonna watch that for sure. Um, and for me, another thing that I get asked for a lot is how to use the different tools of teaching, particularly software and hardware. I do a lot of kind of um, advice on, on that kind of stuff. And what are the different softwares that are available? Oh, there's loads. Um, OBS Studio, which is what I'm using right now. Okay. Um, this is a little bit more, you kind of have to, it has a bit of a learning curve, but once you're used to using it, you can do all sorts of stuff and just appear in different places. And there's oh, so much you can do with it. Yeah. Uh, and ManyCam, people have probably heard of that. ManyCam's great. You can have um, kind of masks and filters and stuff and wigs and um you can use a green screen if you buy the paid version i will be honest i kind of fell out with ManyCam a little bit because i noticed how much um ram it was using on my pc it was really using a lot of the uh the processor memory so i just decided to um use obs instead and it's free um another thing that i'm using actually right now is a software called RTX Voice and it completely gets rid of any background noise. So I'll actually show this to you, right? So I'll, I'll type on my keyboard and I'll just type a, a message in Skype and you can tell me if you if you get it. So I'll type, hello, my name is Joe and I'm having an interview with Emily. Okay. Did you hear the typing? Uh, no, not really. Okay, now I will untick RTX voice. Okay, and I'll type it again. Oh, wow. With Emily. Yeah, so you can hear the difference, right? Yeah. And that's um, one of the major pieces of software that's changed my life recently. One of my most recent videos on YouTube is um, of me teaching a class and you can hear you can hear the audio of everything of my surroundings on my phone and then actually what the student hears with the software and the headset and there's people doing construction work in the building and it's it's so loud and the student can't hear any of it it's pretty crazy so that's, that's rtx fantastic. voice yeah and that must be a really good tool for people who maybe don't have an office space or a quiet room to sit in that sounds really fantastic yeah 
it cuts yeah. out dogs, babies crying, dogs barking. It's it's crazy. Yeah. That's so cool. Wow. Okay. Honestly, Joe, I think we've gotten through all of the questions actually much faster than I thought we would. So thank you for that. <laughs> thank you so much because I think you know some people. Sometimes I think there's this. Ooh, I don't want to share too much information because it's such a competitive market. But I really appreciate you sharing that insider knowledge because this is one of our best-selling courses, and we're always looking for ways to actually help people beyond just the certificate, you know, because they want to know what's next. And your insight and your input is just awesome. So thank you so much. No, thank you. And I'd, I'd like to say for you know people watching this video, if you do decide to do the course, um, I think that you would regret in the future, maybe in a week or in three years, you'd regret not paying attention and not really, you know, um, absorbing the quality of the course and the information and the advice that's given in there. Because, you know, when I'm teaching, sometimes I'll um, remember something that I learned in a course and it can save my class um, in that moment. So it's good to really, you know, put your head down, pay attention and make sure you're, um, you know, you know, come out on top at the end of it all. That's fantastic. Oh, I love that. Thank you so much uh, for taking the time out of your very early morning over there. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, thank you. It was lovely talking yeah. to you.